maybe now I can show you better. So what I've tried to do here um, is to recreate a um, old piece of wood. It's called reclaimed wood. It means that you paint one coat and then you paint on top and then then you peel off and you ended up with two different colors just um, mixed up and I like to work on bottles because everyone has a bottle at home you don't need to buy like a box or another NDF piece you can work on bottles and um, it looks it looks beautiful, I like it. It looks pretty to decorate your home, to give as a present, or maybe sell it. You can start your own small business with handmade craft. Um, I'm gonna show you closer. beautiful to me hope you like this project it's really simple yeah start working first thing I just put one bottle this is a beer bottle I washed it uh, get rid of the labels and all the sticky things um, and now I'm going to put some alcohol cotton ball for this just put my music back there you go okay so we're just going to clean the surface with alcohol any glass cleaner will do Very important to keep the surface um, clean without any dirt or grease, otherwise the paint will stick on it. It wouldn't I mean, it wouldn't stick on it. That's the first thing to do. After that, we're going to mix. Oh, this is a dapper. It's like a sponge with a stick on it. And we're going to use chalk paint. Because it's the only paint that will stick on this slick surface, like glass, plastic or metal, some metal. Um, you can use an uh, all-purpose sealer as well if you don't have um, chalk paint. If you want to work direct with acrylics, you really need a primer first. <clears throat> Pardon me. Like um, an all-purpose sealer. But in this case, we're going to skip one step and we're just going to use directly the chalk paint. too hard just try to make it even
it will get um, some texture which is okay because this is a rustic style this project as I said before we're trying to imitate a reclaimed wood a piece of wood that you just before normally they paint all over once or twice or maybe more and then the paint start peeling off and, and crackling going to cover all around <clears throat> two coats will do I prefer to put two coats so to make it more um, stable if you will I mean because we're going to work on top with acrylics, it's better the surface to be completely covered. Because on the first coat, it will never be even, you know? Or it will be weak to me. I prefer to um, put two coats to make sure you won't peel off. It's quite easy and fast. Just a matter of patience because you need to wait until it's dry to apply the second coat. Same here at the top and at the bottom as well. Just like this. You can see it. And more. Just small touches. And that'll do. So that's the first step okay to primer or to paint with the chocolate that acts like a primer also as a base coating okay let me put my paint away And that's because I don't want to spend too much time waiting for it to dry. I did already pass the uh, two coats of the chalk paint on this small bottle. The only difference with the other bottle is that this one got like some, you know, the brown, the, the brown, the brand, the name here. And I just covered it with a little bit of um, modeling paste with the. I just put a little bit of model in place and just cover the name with the paste. That's the only difference between this and the other bottle. You see this bottle is it doesn't have any, any name. It's just plain here. So that's an, one extra step on this little one. I'm gonna work in this small one, so it's gonna take too long. You can see there. Okay, so for this project we want to work with two colors. Uh, I use this brand, you can use whichever you have. Uh, it's just um, beige, uh, cream, maybe cream, and a bluish color. The name in this brand is Buttermilk, and this is two twice this are twice yeah I will put the list of materials in the description of this video so you will have it so don't worry about it now I just want to show you how to apply it let me move this here okay. 
You can perfectly work with a paintbrush or with a sponge, you know, the kitchen sponge. You can use the paint easily because this paint is like not structured paint, it's just free movement. It's, it's very easy. So let me just put the paint on my palette. So let's okay, we need two paints here in the palette. paintbrush have to be uh, humid not wet but humid because you need to make the paint um, to move freely I'll show you I'll start with the cream one and just in freely motion up and down and then I get a little a little bit of the other one and mix it around try not to make one paint you need to notice both colors you know i mean try not to mix it too much you can clean it show you on your taste if you want more of the bluish or more of the cream and try not to make like one line it has to end up in different shapes you can put it um, instead of putting this way you can put it this this side and just make it finish in a funny funny way make it look like you painted on top a different color and the paint was peeling off this whole technique is so easy simple like that just try to make it blend so you never know when one color finish and when the other starts to blend it but not mix it just blend it and as i said it depends on you if you want to make it more bluish or more cream depends on your taste to me that will do probably here mm, what do you think I think it's a little bit blue here as long as it's um wet the paint it will be easy to blend it because you're working this technique is called wet on wet so as long as the base one is wet you can blend the other one and if you think your paintbrush is, is getting too dry, do to, you remember we put a little a few drops of water here? So just with that, it's enough to work and make it humid again. So your paint would um, spread nicely. Okay, so two. I'm just going to put it upside down and work the bottom. Hopefully, we'll I'm gonna hold it from, from the bottom as well because I haven't painted this. So I can put my hands, you know, there. And I got the bottom. 
Um pouquinho. Já sendo assim. You want to get rid of the blue. Clean your paintbrush on the paper. And then the same procedure. too much blue. Okay, I put a little bit of um, one drop of the use too much material. Just like that. That's it. To me that's perfect. I will have to dry so I can turn my bottle upside down. Because if I put my hands anywhere it will just so sorry about the noise, I'm going to play. Twist on this part. Okay. It's too much. You don't need much with this technique. Just a few drops will do. Look, I'm just going to blend it with the one underneath the other coat. Depends on your taste. To me, that's it. Yep. Okay. That's it. Sorry, I have to dry this one and, and that will be this step. Okay. Hello, Denise. Hi. Hi Antonia! Hi oh, Antonia! Gracias por estar ahí. Qué gusto tenerte. Qué honor. Antonia es una de mis profesoras. 
gracias. Thank you, Denise. by myself. Oh no, I have three people watching. Maybe two. Okay, next step. Mm, let me just clean my paintbrush to the water and I'm going to clean my gonna paint some flowers. For this step, you see I'm gonna show you all this hand painted is so easy, it's so simple you will see. Um, we're gonna need a red color and white. Okay, we're going to start blending it together like before. But in this case, um, I'll show you how <laughs> the motion that you have to do, okay? Let's see. So you need not much. Just uh, one or two drops of the red paint and one or two of the white one. Okay. The colors, this one is burgundy wine. And this is just uh, snow titanium white. This is the uh, so it's just the red and the white, whichever you have. And then we're gonna need a round paintbrush. In this case, I'm using a small one because my area is not too big. With this other bot bottle, I used uh, a bigger one. But yeah, you just you need to look your surface and um, work with it so now so i'm going to choose one side the one that i like better i think it will be this one and you start like this you wet your paintbrush you get a bit of your it doesn't have to be too wet yeah I will just do it here. Just a freely motion. Can you see there? Yes. Oh, I want it maybe this side. And then you get the white one and you make one, two, three. And as long as the paint is wet. It would blend with the other one, and your rose would get two different beautiful colors. You can put more white if you want, just to give it some light. Yeah, maybe it's a little more red to me here. Motion is like um, it's like coma in Spanish. It's um, like a period. Uh, no, it's not period. It's a what is a coma? Sorry, forgot the name. Let's go for the second one. Which is the best brand of acrylic paint to me is Deco Art. That's the one that I use. But you can use whichever will do. Because I tested plenty and this is the best to me. 
So now it's the same motion. No complications, it's just it's very simple. really need to know when to stop as well because sometimes I get caught and I will never stop trying to make it look better but I can be mistaken it will look like a rose for sure it's just a matter of giving light with white and make the other colors plain. Okay, now um, I will use the green one. Let me just dry it a little bit. shades of green, one darker than the other one. Same paintbrush and this time I'm gonna start working on the leaves. Maybe just one here. Take a little bit of the, the other color. Use both colors so it's not too plain. Maybe here. This is just free. Make some. Just one here. You don't need to fill it with lips. Just it depends on your your taste. like a little drop shape as long as you use the darker and the lighter color it will look just nice if you don't like it just clean it and do it again don't wait until it's dry 
to decide that you don't like it. So I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Because I have three here, maybe I'm just going to do one, one or two. It depends. This area is smaller than my other bottle. So just put one in. Just there. Let's go again. Be careful where you put your hands because try not to grab the paint is already wet. Lonely, maybe just a small. Ah, I know what I'm going to do. I'll show you just the baby ones. I don't know how to call it. Botón, como se dice botón in English? The flor, the rosa. It's just like a drop again. In the darker color, so I'm just gonna put a little bit on top. Let me clean my paintbrush. I'm going to show you how to work on the baby ones. It's just the one. I'm going to do this side. It doesn't make sense to me. It gotta make sense. Can see it. 
it's very delicate this is it's like it's hugging it another one here because it looks too long to me so the same here so you can use a liner if you want to make it easier It's a free design you just work it as you like it I think that's enough otherwise it will look too too much let me see my my roses if you think you can put a little bit more of light you can just get a little bit of white paint and here and there on this is just what you like what you feel like yeah, that's it so now I have to dry it and then we go with the final step one second I'm gonna dry sorry about the noise other bottles um, I've apply a little bit of a brownish color to make it look antique like vintage that's my style to be honest that's what I like you don't have to do it you like it like that but to me it looks like an unfinished job I'm just gonna pass a little bit of brown I used to kind of brown on my original motto is too, but probably it's a little bit too dark. I don't know, as I, as I said, and I repeat again, it depends on your taste. I'm just gonna use this lighter one, and this technique it would be the dry brushing technique. I didn't wet the, the paintbrush, that's what it's called, dry brushing technique. Just get it all inside the brushes, the bristles. And then you need to get rid of this on the paper. And you move this. So you get rid of the excess, like really get rid of it. Because you don't want um, a 
it's mud you just want to make it very subtle like it's all from time you can see the difference just here and there I don't know you can see it Especially at the bottom, uh, sorry, at the bottom and at the top. And just a few touches in the middle. Let me just put a little bit more of paint. So here. Technique as well here. Let me put it upside down and I'm working from the bottom. No, and this is supposed to be an antique thing. It's supposed to be all the time like this, and we get dirt and. It just get get solved. And then we start doing like this. Because in it we are just making it look like an antique piece. It can be very subtle or you can make it more more obvious depends on you but it's good to have it a little bit just here so it can it can make sense you know because if something gets old it will be like the whole piece not only just one side or just the top or just the bottom when you paintbrush um, has less pain, you can apply a little bit of uh, strength, not too much. What do you think? To me, it changes, looks better to me, but it depends on your taste. So I would do that. Okay, can you see it? Is there anybody there? <laughs> We're about to finish. I put here, um, a, I use a stamp, of course, was a big one because my area that I'm working with is bigger. Um, and I put this stamp that I'm not gonna use in this small bottle because it would be way too much. So I chose, let me just put one here. I chose a small one for this bottle. Just can you see there? Would be just this just a, a, a word, not a phrase, a word. It says believe. So I'm gonna use um, I use this one, the Cairo ink from Distressed Ranger because this one is um work proof you can use when it's dry you can use the um, varnish on top so what I'm doing see there yeah and apply the there you go I like this one because it's like handwriting And the 
that's it. Can you see it? Oh, thank you, Denise. I really appreciate that you like it. So it will just look like this. And after the stamp is dry, completely dry, because if you come with the um, varnish on top, it will just make a big smudge. So you need to make sure it is really dry before you apply your varnish, because you need to protect the acrylic paint. Um, I use some matte varnish because it have to make sense again with the style. If it's an antique thing, it won't be shiny. You can use some um, satin one that is not that, that glossy, but I, I do use matte with almost every, every job that I do, every of my pieces. So this will be the last, the last step. And to decorate, because that's the, the final part, I use this lace in white because this one to me look a little bit too dark so I said it needs some light I use the the white lace and I will do the same here let's see what do you think I think it finishes the the job it completes it Probably this is a little bit too big for this bottle, but just now it's too big. Just cut it. Scissors. I didn't want to make um, the ribbon because I think it would be too much because of the flowers we have here that they are at the start of the show. And okay. okay, let me move this away to show you properly. So I put it on the side, you can put it at the front if you want to, but I will just put it when I put it on the side. And well, maybe at the back, depends on you, you can move it around, you play with it and you put it wherever you feel like it. That's the same thing I've done with the big one because if I put it on the side, I think well, it looks okay. And you can move it, right? you move it around and you put it where you feel like it looks better. You see? And uh, that was it. It's a simple, quick project. It looks beautiful to me. I hope you liked it. <clears throat> Just don't forget to pass the varnish when it's um, and it's dry and that will be it thank you very much for the ones who stay at the end until the end i mean and please tell me how did you like it yes, yes. <laughs> hi okay so 
that was it for today and I'm planning to come every week so yes stay around and I'll see you next time thank you for being there gracias Denise. thank you very much um, so bye bye for now and take care bye